This is the Roadtrack 190 Versatile. You can see it's got two solar panels on the side. They normally stay in that position but they are designed to be tiltable if you want to. I usually face the sun on the south side so they work very effectively that way but winter time you can tilt them up a bit if you want to. On the top there's three more solar panels. Little trailer hitch. Contra carrier. It plugs in there into the tow bar hitch and it's actually removable this Here you can see inside the back door I've taken down what is normally a wooden panel that runs across the back here uh, so that you've got access to step straight in or move like you can put a kayak in through there if you want to carry it inside uh, there's the inverter down there I'll just open this up a bit more by lowering the spare wheel and uh, I'll open up the back door there again is a shot of the back of the rear end you can you can see there's no wooden panel across here to get off here at this point so this is now all open you can open up the mosquito screen and just climb in and out through the back if you want to and all the electrical stuff is down here the batteries are under the seat inside which I'll show you in a minute or two in the back here we have the sine wave inverter very powerful will convert the the battery power 12 volts to 110 volts AC used to power the microwave, the air conditioner for a short period of time and most of the things that would run off 110 volts AC. This is the panel with all the wiring on here, a couple of master switches. There's a switch in the corner down here which I've rigged up a, a little uh, fuel pump so that if you need to fuel the uh, generator portable generator you can actually take the fuel out of the, fuel, the vehicle's fuel tank and just use that pump and uh, um, this fuel line to transfer it into the, the generator tank up here you've got the back of the display panels which I'll show you on the other side there's a cutoff switch for various things there are fuses old lined in here for various things the uh, wiring goes up to the the solar panels and there's another wiring wire coming out through this back door here which comes out of this little plug in here for the ground solar cells so you can run two or more solar cells into that to boost further charging capability coming inside you've got the single door here but you can also open it up as usual into the twin door. There is a, a mosquito net available here with a zipper in it so you can actually let yourself in and out keep the bugs out. Coming inside that's the, uh, the portable 12 volt plug-in dual freezer. There's two sides to it. Both are controllable um, to be freezers or, or a fridge, whichever you want to set them up for. And that runs off the, the 12 volt supply. Quick tour, look around. It's very standard. There's the Wii Boost to power up the self uh, tower amplifier system. The usual displays here, they're all standard. There's two outlets here for powering this. There's a plug in fan here which is also on a thermostat control that you can set up and uh, inside here on the front I've got the tyre pressure gauge on all the tyres up here um, we've got a um, this one over here is the uh, reversing sensor so you can tell when you're backing up how close you are to things there is a, a camera system available here as well which is laying down at the moment down over there but that clips on and that can give you views through the front and also through the back rear view mirror you can uh, see where you're going or who's behind you and it's a little bit Heath Robinson down here but it could be tidied up just plug in these various devices here two solar panels 
for outside. Uh, they plug into the back door to give you extra charging capacity. This is one of the tables. There is a, a little piece in the floor as usual on the road track. Again, if you look at the standard road tracks, you'll see how this lot fits together. I'm not going to go over it. Two captain's seats are rever uh, can be turned around, so you can face this way. This one can, and this one can be adjusted, so you've got an extra little bunk across here from here with this seat folding down. Oh, sorry, with this seat revolving round and then this back seat piece fits in between the gap here. It's quite, quite clever. Here we've got the, the um, mirror on the the door to the toilet and also the shower unit. The shower unit works with the, the floor out here. The shower's in use when you're standing out here and these side door, these doors open up to give you a a closed in piece here which you can pull the door open there and that just traps that one there. So that just fits there to block off a little bit of privacy there if you want it or at night time if you want to keep the heat or the cool whatever you're using in this area where the sleeping compartment is. Um, inside here the shower unit and the controls for the shower unit as usual. There's a uh, the vent here, standard vent. Open it up, turn it up, let it as much or as little air in out as you want to. And uh, there's the, tr the shower track around here um, and the shower curtain here, which will pull around so you can take a shower in here. Hot and cold water works great. This is the, the top of the line uh, composting to toilet. These are really great, awesome. There's no smell in here at all. In fact, there's a small plug-in vent that takes any, any vapors that might come off and vents them out anyway. But uh, not normally an issue. The toilet is very clever. It has this end for the number twos, obviously. This is if you want the P side of it. It goes the P goes down into this bottle, which you take off and empty every couple of days. And uh, the back, as it fills up, you've you've got a um, compost material in there, usually peat, which you stir in with a lever, and uh, it dries it out. And um, you can take it out. Just tip these parts come come off you can take it apart and uh, just dump the the waste material you can actually put in a black sack and throw it in the garbage or you can obviously put it on a compost heap or whatever it doesn't smell the only time that this stuff smells which is what you get when you have a black tank if you mix urine with the number two material you will end up with uh, sewage and sewage stinks if you keep it separate they don't stink the urine will eventually stink if you leave it for too long, so you empty that every few days. Um, but it's a quick and easy procedure, it doesn't stink normally. Um, so that, that's how that works. You can look that up online, just do some video YouTube checks and you'll find out how these things work. But this thing is awesome. Well worth the money. <coughs> it was a ridiculous amount. But anyway, again that one closes down. Let's push, push two and locks in place. On the other side you've got the second drawer which I cut down this storage um, so that to give it more capability for sleeping which I'll go to in a minute. This is the storage cabinet here and then some under storage there. And over on this side we've got the sink with the cover here. Hot and cold water through here. The pink is uh, the um, antifreeze to uh, flush through all the water tanks and the drains to stop anything freezing in the winter. Usual draw unit here. This is a modification. This is where the, the fridge went, the Domatech. I didn't like it. it. Didn't work very well. In fact, it was useless. So I took it out and moved over to this colliery. Uh, which I, I really like and it's portable that so you can take it elsewhere if you want to. So I built this cabinet area in here and I also took the uh, a door unit or a cabinet that was underneath here originally and uh, put it here instead. So this storage here, there's a little bit of storage behind there through this little back platform there if you want to hide stuff away. But uh, storage there, 
this is very simple in that it just lifts up to a groove and drops in so everything's secure won't fall out in here you've got the usual plumbing which I won't go into because you can find that again by looking at a video on YouTube uh, most area here I cut away I took away a part of the cabinet that was up here originally to allow for more space in the seating area and allow for, se uh, for sleeping I'll come back to that in a minute okay more storage into these units here go back there on both sides on that side one on this side this is a brand new air conditioning in unit and it works great it's got remote control and you can uh, you can operate it from the remote control or you can set it up to work from the switches here I have a little deflector here on the top which when you pull it down it can be made to deflect the air coming out the air conditioned straight down into this area so it keeps it nice and cozy and uh, you can limit where the air is being used i just press that back up again there we go okay so let's press back up on there that can be removed completely if necessary but i find it works really really well to deflect the air and help it roll around in this area which is mainly a seating area now you can see how open the back is cross board that lock the sleeping section here is, is, is the usual standard one with these extension areas down here so you can actually sleep two sleeping bags one down either side into these spaces by moving the or you can just do the traditional one of putting one of the tabletops the, the one that's down in the, in the front at the moment put it across here and then using the, cur the cushions you can fill this in and this becomes a sleeping area which you normally sleep across ways on uh, if you want to but like I say you can use that I've also built these extension pieces down here which um, have little stilts to hold it up you can pull these uh, mattresses out a bit more and it gives you more width for sleeping if you're sleeping individually on the two uh, sleeping bag setups down below here you can see the fuse system is standard under there And on this side there's a water tank in behind this unit now underneath here I'll take I'll lift the, ca the um, cushions in a moment and show you what it's like over here we've got the, the charging system at the moment I've turned it off for the winter but if you turn on the solar panel here there and then turn it on down here to solar the displays will wake up and we've got two systems one over here shows you the the charging rate you can see it's the batteries at 13.176 um, the charge rate if there was any charge coming in it would be there but these batteries are charged up so there's no charge going on uh, this is the voltage on the output where there is some sunlight so if the battery was in use it will actually take some in fact this flashing light here means now it's starting to use some charge small amount not 0 0.1 of an amp 0 0.01 of an amp so it's trickle charging but it will charge up considerably if the batteries need it down below here i put in these two um, measuring units so that if you turn something on you can actually um, get a, a readout of what's going on uh, this switch here up here is for the uh, inverter so if you press that and hold it the green light comes on you'll see that we've got um, these displays down here are reading as that a little bit of draw for the inverters using some power and up here you can see that at the moment we've got charge but nothing really going on if I can step back and turn something on now for example the you'll see now that there's a light on the microwave so now the microwave is powered up and can be used and uh, the TV by the way around here is a 12 volt TV so with a DVD slot in the side of it so you can actually watch 
video as an over the air um, TV stations and so on. Now over here, if I turn on the uh, the uh, I've got to remember where the switch is. There we go. Turn on the air conditioner. You can probably hear it coming on. You can dial up the setting, and it's 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 working already. There is a uh, a little controller, remote control. For doing that. That works very nice now. I'm instantly feeling the cold. And as I say, this piece here will deflect that down if you want it to. Very powerful air conditioning from the front as well when you've got the engine running or you're driving. So that does the job there, but this works really well. Just turn it off again. That's running purely off the, the batteries at the moment. So I'll, I'll turn it on again. And you'll see down here that there is some power being pulled now. Now this inverter here, I've got it, it's a times three. So whatever amperage you see there, multiply it by three and that's what's actually been drawn when that's on. The, uh, or it's the bottom one actually. That one there we're drawing uh, 1.26. Now we're drawing 3.71. But the top one you multiply by three. So it gives you some of it idea of the power being used. If you look up here you might see now that the, the amperage charge has gone up um, because we are pulling power out of the batteries and there's some available sunlight so it's putting some charge back in. You can also notice that the voltage is dropping here um, and it's being run. Air conditioner takes a lot of power and so you wouldn't want to run it very long, an hour at the most is probably what you're going to get. You can of course plug the whole system into shore power and run the air conditioner and everything else uh, off the mains, 110 volts plug in from outside if you want to. Or you can plug the generator in and run it off that too. So there are various options. Okay, I'm going to step back here, turn this off again. show that that's what we're left with. It's still picking up a little bit of a charge but less than an amp, not very much. And down here we've dropped back down on the, the drawer and in the winter time I turned the, the, the solar. Okay here's the view at the back. Still got the, the fly mesh, the mosquito screens up there although you can't see it but uh, that's keeping all the, any flies out. Uh, yeah, curtains out of the way. The original board that was across here I cut out because now we've got a lot of access and a nice view out the back and I'll show you in a second the um, the battery system underneath here. With the cushion removed you've now got access to this panel here which is where the batteries are stored. This just lifts out and you can see there are in fact one, two, three, four, five lithium batteries. Yeah. Uh, lithium what is it, LP PO4 or something I think is the, the term. They're wired up in um, parallel so you've got 12 volts times the 100 amps on each one I think so yeah so that's what it is so you've got one two three four five five hundred amps at 12 volts uh, that's quite a good capacity should power up things for a long time in here you've got the usual uh, traditional wiring system that's been modified to allow for the um, these battery powered packs instead of the single battery that used to be in the lead acid one Again, you can look that up online, but uh, this is all available here. So the system, if you're not hooked up to um, an onshore plug-in at a campsite or something like that, if you're out in boondocking, this is what will keep you going. This and the generator, which if you want, if, which, if you want to use it, you can uh, you can switch on the solar panels, leave them on. You can switch on the rest of it, turn the inverter on when you need. The other things 
all the lights in here are all um, the I'll just turn this back on again so they come on so you've got um, switch to turn on the the gas water heater down underneath here that's standard you've got switches for the extraction fans and stuff for the oven uh, over here outlets 110 as usual you can see there's an electric kettle here which I'll leave in here and you can put toasters and anything else that runs off that either shore power generator or solar power over a short period of time so uh, that's that's about it really I think uh, if you've got any more questions oh there's a the usual heat uh, um, floor heater down there as well that's a gas heater too there's uh, fire extinguishers around some spare tools and spare parts um, but yeah it's been uh, custom converted to make it more efficient for boondocking and uh, off-grid use but otherwise it's a really really nice road track as they all are so if you like it contact me and I can give you further information thank you